Sarajevo, July 28th, 1914. The Archduke Franz Ferdinand is shot by a Serbian nationalist. Austria and Germany move against the tiny Balkan nation. However, the Tsar has other ideas. He mobilizes the Russian army and in a hotbed of alliances, France and Russia were pitted against the dual alliance. War had begun. For almost 100 years, ever since Napoleon, Europe had been in peace. Now it was at war. Germany, Germany, Austria, the Ottoman Empire, Bulgaria would fight against the allied powers of the United States, the UK, France, Russia, Italy, and Japan. New technologies and old tactics would lead to the deaths of millions. The machine gun gave defending troops the ability to mow down whole battalions. Meanwhile, tanks made machine guns worthless as they penetrated enemy lines. Aircraft would open the new aerial theater of war. Submarines would allow, would allow for the destruction of British trade lines and sinking of hundreds of trade convoys. Chemical warfare allowed for the killings of, killing of hundreds of the enemy. Over the course of the war, millions would perish. In 1917, Russia would collapse to Germany while the United States would join the war. In 1918, the situation was dire for both sides. On the Allied side, the United States was still deploying troops to the continent. The United Kingdom had faced hundreds of lost convoys and millions of lost tonnage at sea. France was in a desperate situation. The North was occupied, its people worn out, its army defeated. However, the Central Powers were also dire. Germany was on the brink of starvation, its manpower thin, its resources thinner, and its population was war-weary and tired. Austria-Hungary was on the verge of collapse as international na nationalism threatened the unity of the nation. The Ottoman, Arm the Ottoman Empire was the only central power to lose territory to the Allies in large amounts. Its army was crippled and it relied on the berlin baghdad railway in order to supply itself. Thus, 1918, the Germans unleashed a final push that would knock out France and force the British out of Europe. If this could be achieved, then a peace could be signed. The offensive demolished the French forces. German forces were mere kilometers from Paris. However, American forces were arriving in mass and the offensive stalled. The Germans were overstretched. The retreat of the German army turned into a reroute. Bulgaria agreed to armistice in October. The British forces entered Damascus and the Ottomans were forced to accept peace shortly thereafter. Austria-Hungary was pushed back by the Italians and the nationalist forces broke free. The Emperor abdicated and fled. Germany was by November all alone. Kaiser abdicated on the 8th of October, and on the 9th, the Chancellor Prince Max abdicated. Socialists seized control of the government. Meanwhile, an armistice commission was sent across the lines. On the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, the war was over. Germany accepted an armistice and awaited a peace settlement for allies already ahead of her. The Austrian Empire was disintegrated into nation states. The Bulgarians accepted losing their agency possessions. The Ottoman Empire was partitioned. The Middle East was divided according to the sykes picot Agreement. However, Turkey would go to war, and after defeating the Greek armies in Anatolia, the Treaty of Lusiane established the modern-day Republic of Turkey. Germany faced much heavier terms. In Paris 1919, Germany was to face the full guilt of the war, according to Article 231. Germany would lose all of its colonies. Germany would lose Alsace-Lorraine and the Polish Corridor and northern squeak holstein in Europe. Saarland was placed under French occupation. The Rhineland was demilitarized. The German army was limited to 100,000 men. The Air Force became non-existent. There was a ban on submarines, a ban on tanks. Germany was forced to pay billions of marks in reparation to the Allies. Germany would enact a dem democratic system of governance. It was a humiliating peace. The Allies were split into main four parties. First, led by the French, sought to leave Germany weak and unable to wage war ever again. They suffered the most in manpower and in terms of material damage to their lands. The British led the moderate party, which sought to limit German influence, but to keep the German economy stable enough to prevent radical communist uprisings. The Americans, who suffered the least, simply wanted to end the war, but they wanted to achieve a global peace, thus establishing the League of, League of Nations. Meanwhile, Italy, Japan, China, Poland, Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia, Greece, and Hijaz all wanted nothing more than land and resources for their own nation without care to certain principles. At the beginning of 1919, the communist factions waged war against the socialists and the right. This failed and the free corps were established. Germany would for over a decade be in a cold war between communists and nationalists. The Weimar Republic was a failure for many reasons. First was that this was an imposed government on the German people. 
The Germans had resented the Allies and thus the government was seen as an Allied puppet. The second was that the Germans had never had such a system. They were used to monarchies and aristocratic governments. Third was that in defeat radical groups were on the rise, the communists on the left and, and later on the fascists on the right. The Allies were also not willing to aid in the suppression of such movements, especially after the Great Depression. In 1933, Hitler's proclaimed Führer of the Reich after the death of, of the President Hindenburg. For three years, he builds up the German economy and its army. The German people admire the men who brought Germany out of the Depression. Hitler, in 1935, Hitler makes his moves. He demands a Pepsil and annexes the Saarland. In 1936, he re remilitarizes the Rhineland. These were clear violations of the treaty, but France and Britain wanted no more war and thus accepted Hitler's moves. Hitler was emboldened by the British, Fr British and French unwillingness to act to protect the treaty. In two years, Germany moved on to its southern neighbor. Austria and Germany were specifically forbidden to unite in the Treaty of Versailles and the Treaty of Saint Germain. Hitler, however, wanted to reunite the German people of Europe into one state. Greeted with cheering crowds in March 1938, Hitler's armies marched into Austria unopposed. The Allies once again did nothing. The Sudetenland, however, had an ethnically German, ethnic German makeup. Hitler wanted the Sudetenland for its factories and thus decided to demand the Sudetenland from the Czech state. <laughs> The Allies with Italian mediation agreed to give Germany the Sudetenland. Hitler had once again seized territory without German blood. The Munich Agreement was seen as the final appeasement of Hitler. However, in 1939, Hitler orders the army into the rest of Czechoslovakia. Poland seized small areas of land from the northern states. Meanwhile, Hungary seized areas of the borderland. Hitler established two puppet states, the Protectorate of Bohemia and Morova, and a Slovak state in the east. Hitler had, in the course of his six-year reign, turned German glory, returned German glory to a defeated nation. He made a pact with Mussolini of Italy and Hirohiro in Japan. Hitler was in the eyes of the defeated Germans a hero who the West could not dare contradict. However, Prussia had been divided by the Polish quarter and the Danzig. Hitler now demands it from the Poles. The British and the French, however, guarantee Polish independence. Hitler countered this with the molotov ribbentrop Pact with the United Soviet Socialist Republic. The deal split a Poland between the powers. On September 1st, the Germans attacked. At 8 that morning, German troops pushed aside the Polish frontier barriers and mobile forces raced forward. From the start, it went well for the Germans. The Polish Air Force was effectively eliminated within the first two days. The Panzers cut through and struck deep. World War II had begun. On May 10th, France and the Low Countries were invaded. Then the frontier barriers were pushed aside. And Hitler's Army Group B under General Fedor von Bock now drove into Holland and Belgium. Then came the hammer blow. The thing that British and French planners had thought impossible had happened. German panzers were through the Ardennes and had reached the Meuse by the evening of May the 12th. It seemed that nothing could now stop Guderian. He plunged on further and further into France. By the 19th, his lead units were past Perron. On the 20th, in an extraordinary 56-mile dash, Amiens had been taken by lunchtime. Abbeville, just 14 miles from the English Channel, was seized by nine that evening. And at midnight, a battalion of the 2nd Panzer Division reached the coast at Noyelle. On June 22nd, France capitulated. French signed a surrender deal on the same train that the Germans had just 18 years earlier. Hitler had avenged the Germans. Thus, the war to end all wars led to the most devastating conflict in human history. 70 million would lose their lives.